That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. All right, guys, halfway through recording our last video where we talked about the dynasty gold that are rookie running backs as well as those sophomore year running backs, I figured it would be a very smart idea to go out here and make a video really trying to illustrate how important it is to have those rookie running backs, having those guys are still on their rookie contracts. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about running backs that had a significant amount of value 12 months from now. But now it looks like they are just going to be dead in fantasy football going into 2021. And now here I'll say these are not guys that we should be cutting in dynasty fantasy football, especially if we have deeper rosters, as maybe they'll find a spot on an NFL roster as a backup mentor type running back, or maybe fall into the role of a Frank Gore, where we know that yes, they're not going to be top fantasy contributors. Yes, they're not going to be top 12 running backs ever again, but maybe they could be a handcuff type. Maybe they could provide you some few spot starts. So please don't go out there and cut these players, but I think this is going to be a great exercise to show y'all how horrible it is to hold on to these running backs after they end up on their second deal. Okay, so first off, let's start it with the running back that I've always hated in Dynasty Fantasy Football, and this is going to be Raheem Mostert. Okay, so with Raheem, obviously, he's had a ton of struggles so far in 2020. This was the reason that we were avoiding him coming into the year, as he has been a committee running back throughout his entire NFL career. And really, we did not want to fall into the small sample size trap of looking at him being a feature down running back in San Francisco at the end of 2019 and just kind of assume that was going to be exactly what we saw in 2020. On top of that, a lot of people don't really understand how old Raheem is, where he's going to turn 29 by the time 2021 starts off. And here with Raheem, he's also playing under the last year of his deal that he got for the San Francisco 49ers. Now, yes, I technically know that he is under contract in 2021, but if you just look at the way that contract is constructed, I mean, they could easily get out of it if they wanted want to. So I think that we just have to treat it as if Raheem Mostert could be a free agent this offseason, knowing that the San Francisco 49ers have an easy out if they were not impressed with what he was able to do, if they don't think that he should be a part of the future team's game plan. And yeah, I mean, why would they think that based on his lack of production in 2020 and combined with the fact that he struggled with injuries and combined with the fact that we know the most valuable thing that a running back can give to an NFL offense is the pass catching ability, which Raheem has none of. Okay, so now let's get to our next running back, someone that is a little bit more intriguing here, and this is going to be a marking room. And now the reason that he's a little bit more intriguing is because I have no idea what to expect. I mean, he is about to turn 31. He'll be 31 by the time this season ends. And yes, I don't expect him to be on the Baltimore Ravens, but are we going to see him transition his game into maybe a Frank Gore? Are we going to see him stick around on an NFL roster for a very long time? Personally, I don't think so. I think that we could see Mark Ingram retiring as early as 2021, 2022. And yeah, I mean, here, 31 years old. I mean, he had a hell of a career. Mark Ingram, though, I'm sorry. Jack Robbins was drafted to replace you in the second round. I really don't see a future with Mark Ingram in the NFL. Maybe a player that, I mean, you just should not have been rostering coming into the season regardless. Obviously, anybody with a brain knew that Mark Ingram was going to be dead after 2020. But really, I just want to pay him some tribute. Give him some time on the airways. Mark Ingram, congrats on the career. But I think you're dead in Dynasty Fantasy Football. Okay, so now let's get to our next running back, someone that is significantly younger than these other guys, and someone that was the most impressive running back at his peak compared to pretty much any other running back that you're going to look currently at in the NFL. This will be Todd Gurley. Okay, so Todd Gurley is currently only 26. Todd Gurley will be 27 by the time the 2021 season starts. And I know you all are probably wondering, Mason, why, why are you saying this with Todd Gurley? I mean, based on his age, he should have another two or three years in the NFL. But guys, like I've said with Todd Gurley, why we are avoiding him in every single type of fantasy format coming into 2020 was the Los Angeles Rams knew what was going on with Todd Gurley. The Los Angeles Rams doctors, the people who actually had the opportunity to sit in the room and look and evaluate Todd Gurley, thought that he was toast. Looked at that knee, which we know was diagnosed to have arthritis in it about, uh, I want to say, 18 months ago, and just kind of determined that Todd Gurley was not going to be a running back 
that was going to have the same type of explosion, going to be able to handle the same type of workload that he did earlier on in his NFL career. Then he finds himself in a very nice position for Atlanta. I mean, this was the dream spot for Todd Gurley. We know that he's from Georgia. We, we know that Todd Gurley wanted to go to the Atlanta Falcons and they have historically had a decent offense and there should have been a lot of running production to be had there. But Todd Gurley was one of the least efficient running backs in the entire NFL this past season. He also lost a significant amount of work to Brian Hill. I really don't think he has a future outside of a backup slash mentor role because, I mean, he just does not have the juice left and I don't think that he, his body can even handle the entire workload of an NFL season. Okay, so now our next running back, also someone that we are avoiding, also someone that landed on a great matchup on paper, Melvin Gordon. So with Melvin Gordon, yes, he's in a very similar boat to a Todd Gurley where he's not extremely old. I mean, he's going to be 28 by the time the 2021 season starts. But like I've said so many times, this is the perfect example of avoiding these running backs that are going into holdout type situations, avoiding these running backs that are coming off their rookie contracts. Because with Melvin Gordon, I mean, in 2020, he completely split that backfield with Philip Lindsay. And with him being on the wrong side of 25 at the running back position, we know that this is someone that's losing athleticism by the day. This is someone that is not going to be able to maintain that feature down role that he had in the Los Angeles Chargers offense so many years ago. Literally splitting that backfield 50-50 kind of saved his season for a lot of people who drafted him in 2020 based on the fact that Philip Lindsay went down earlier on this season where Melvin Gordon was able to come out here and he was able to give you some nice production during the beginning of the season. But since Lindsay's come back, that's all disappeared with Melvin Gordon. I mean, sorry, really just don't think we have anything more here than a top end running back three. So yeah, you're going to have to rank him as someone that I am not even intrigued in. Okay. So now our next running back, this is someone that I'm not going to lie in 2019 for his last year at Arizona. I bought into him, David Johnson. Okay. So with David Johnson, I mean, he's going to be 29 years old in a week. And we've also seen David Johnson be very bad at the game of football for two consecutive seasons. Now the two prior seasons, he was dealing with injuries. So I think that David Johnson, more than anything, you look back at his NFL career, it kind of looks like a flash in the pan. It looks like he was one of the most dominant running backs in the entire NFL for a season and a half. And outside of that, we got absolutely nothing. Very sad to see David Johnson deal with these injuries throughout his NFL career. I think that he could have been one of the best running backs out of all time if he was able to stay healthy with what he was able to do outside the tackles as well as catching the ball out of the backfield combined with his overall size. I mean, he was truly a special talent, but now I'm mean, going to be 29, has a contract that really does not guarantee anything for the Houston Texans when he was not able to prove anything for them. What's the incentive for Houston to bring him back? What are we going to be expecting so yeah, David Johnson, I have to officially mark him as a dead running back, not expecting anything. And now for the last part of this video, let me get into some running backs that I think could be falling into this same range a year or two from now. And let's start it off with someone that I know so many people are going to hate me bringing up, but Ezekiel Elliott. Okay, guys, Zeke looks like he's on a very similar trajectory of these other running backs like a David Johnson, like Melvin Gordon, like Todd Gurley, like Mark Ingram, where yes, he was very dominant at his peak. He was a running back that was able to handle a larger workload than pretty much everyone else. He was able to go out there and be efficient with that workload, get usage at the goal line, get usage in the receiving game. At his peak, he was one of the best running backs in the entire NFL. But if you look at what Tony Pollard did in this offense in 2020 compared to Ezekiel Elliott, it looks like Elliott may have just lost all juice. I mean, you watch Elliott play, and yes, he's dealing with the worst offensive line of his entire NFL career. Yes, he's dealing with the worst quarterback play of his entire NFL career. But at the same time, I mean, Zeke is just not the same running back, and Zeke is someone off of that rookie contract. It's a little bit of a different situation in that his agent got him a fantastic deal where he is guaranteed for the next two seasons. But I think he could be falling into this pattern of these guys who go out there, play fantastic on their rookie contracts, get a massive extension or just a massive new deal afterwards, and then really don't live up to that hype as they've already been run into the ground by their NFL franchises. I mean, sucks to say, but Ezekiel Elliott could be falling into that boat. And one more running back that I forgot to mention at the very beginning that I just want to pay tribute to, who is completely dead in fantasy football, I would not be surprised if he was literally not on another roster going into this upcoming season, Le'Veon Bell. Okay, so with Le'Veon Bell, this is another classic story of us trying to avoid these running backs 
coming to the end of their rookie contracts who are going to be holding out, trying to get a bigger deal, maybe going to a new situation. I mean, we saw Melvin Gordon go down with this path. We saw Todd Gurley get that extension, but then have the horrible efficiency with the Los Angeles Rams and the need to end up getting him cut. I mean, you really, guys, please, please, please do not buy into these running backs significantly that are off those rookie contracts as they are some of the most risky assets in Dynasty Fantasy Football. Le'Veon Bell is a perfect example of that. So please use his story where, yes, while he was at his peak, very similar to Todd Gurley, he was one of the best running backs in the entire NFL. But, I mean, with what we were seeing, with how we saw his career go, I think we need to learn that lesson and we need to understand that there is so much risk to be had with these other running backs. Now, thank you guys. I really hope y'all enjoyed this video. I really hope y'all got something from it. As always, if y'all did, go down there, drop that like, leave that comment, subscribe to the channel. It really, really helps us out. And yeah, that's all I got for y'all. I hope I'll see y'all with the video tomorrow. And in that comment section, let me know what video y'all would like to see in the upcoming days.